Coming into 2018, we knew we were going to have an intense fight for fourth place in the Constructors, with a couple of teams in today's season review contesting that fourth place, and the other looking to survive within the sport. But how exactly did Renault, Haas and Force India's 2018 go? The only way to find out is in this video. Right, so first off we'll start with Renault who in pre-season were looking very, very good and looked like they were going to be the best team in the midfield. As their pace in testing was very consistent and strong. But could they carry it over into the real F1 season? Well, in the first four races they didn't really because they never had the fourth fastest car at any of those first four races. With Haas and Force India at times looking better. But Renault were still consistently getting good results in those first four races and looking good from a results point of view. Then just after the start of the European season, the performance of the Renault car was now at its best. Where after strong points finishes in Spain and Monaco, they finished in P7 and P8 at Canada. In a surprising but excellent result. And at this point, it looked as though Renault were definitely and easily going to claim fourth in the Constructors. But then in the races leading into the summer break, they fell off the pace. Mostly because the Renault power unit had now massively fell behind the Ferrari and Mercedes. And it was really affecting them at tracks like Silverstone and Hockenheim. Still though at Silverstone and Hockenheim got great results, P6 and P5 respectively. So despite the drop off in pace, Renault was still looking good. But then after the summer break, pace wise came their worst part of 2018. Where because most of the tracks were reliant on good power, Renault fell behind massively teams like Haas and Force India. And their fourth place in the Constructors Championship now looked in doubt. But after Haas bottled it in the American races, Renault showed up and got the results they needed to finish P4 in the Constructors. They didn't have the pace to do it, but results wise they did deserve it. As the French manufacturer continues to make serious progress. And this is how their 2018 went. So they had a best race result of P5 and a best qualifying result of P5 also. With 24 points finishes and 122 points. Those amount of points finishes is what kept Renault in P4. As the drivers for me did a good enough job. And talking of the drivers let's move on first to Nico Hülkenberg who had in my opinion his best season in F1 to date. After finishing 7th in the drivers championship. And this is what he did in 2018, so he had a best race result of P5 and a best qualifying result of P7. With also 11 points finishes and 69 points. Nico's great performances in the first half of 2018 is why he is at Renault for 2019. As he did play such an important role. But for Carlos Sainz it was a very up and down 2018. He had a best race result P5 and a best qualifying result of also P5 with 13 points finishes and 53 points. But in 2018, he was inconsistent. One race he'd be very, very good, for example, like in Baku, and then another race like Monaco, he just wasn't good enough. Especially compared to his teammate, who in terms of talent, he should be beating. And that's why Sainz is not staying at Renault and going to McLaren for 2019. But for Renault, their best race of the season was, without a doubt, Canada. As not only did they finish in P7 and P8 at the front of the midfield, but they dominated the midfield battle. As they were much faster than teams like Haas and Force India. If they showed this more in 2018, then getting fourth in the Constructors would not have been such a hard battle. But nonetheless, they got it anyway. And their worst race for me is Russia. As not only was the car very slow, but they got a very poor race result on the Sunday. And after this race, I thought it was almost guaranteed that Haas were going to pass them for P4. But to their credit, Renault did respond very well. But despite not having the fastest car in the midfield in 2018, Renault have made more progress. And will be looking to get even closer to the top of the field in 2019. And with Daniel Ricciardo at that team, that is not impossible. Now let's move on to their big rivals of the season, Haas who surprised everyone in pre-season testing by looking so good. And they already looked like they were going to be the surprise team of 2018. And in the first four races, pace-wise, they were. But when it came to results, they were just failing to get those. After blowing a P4 and P5 at the first Grand Prix because of pit stop problems. And that was set the tone for the rest of the season in terms of Haas blowing points and opportunities. 
At the start of the European season though, they kind of bounced back with a great performance at Spain, where Kevin Magnussen was dominantly at the front of the midfield. But in Monaco and Canada, their car was not really that quick at all. More was still needed for Haas to finish fourth in the constructors. But then came their best part of 2018 from France until the summer break, where Haas had the fastest car in the midfield by an absolute mile. As they got a P6 in France and then in Austria they finished in 4th and 5th, which was a massive boost to the team at the time and a massive 22 points. And then also had strong races at Silverstone, Hockenheim and Hungary. And race by race they were closing in on Renault. And after the summer break, despite a couple of races not being at their absolute best, they were still closing in on Renault bit by bit. And it looked as though this battle for fourth in the constructors was going to go right down to the wire in Abu Dhabi. But then at the American races, particularly their home race at Austin, they blew it. As they failed to score points in both the US and Mexican Grand Prix. Whilst Renault during this time scored 22 points. Effectively ending Haas's hopes of finishing in P4. But still when you think about it, this team has only been in F1 since 2016 and they finished in P5 in the Constructors. That is still a great achievement for such a small team in the sport. And this season has to be looked upon as a success. And this is what they did in 2018. So their best race result was P4 in Austria, their best qualifying result was also P5. With 18 points finishes and 93 points. Without a doubt, a very good season for Haas. And Kevin Magnussen, for me, was the better of the two drivers, as he had a best race result of a P5 and a best qualifying result of P6, with 11 points finishes and 56 points. Even though his form did dip in the second half of 2018, in the first half, he was so good and surprisingly consistent despite his reputation. But his teammate Roman Grosjean was anything but consistent. He did have a best race result of P4 and a best qualifying result of P5, but only had 7 points finishes and ended up with 37 points, as he made so many mistakes in the first half of the season. The Haas team in 2019 need more from Grosjean. But no surprise, their best race in my opinion of 2018 was Austria. Not only because they finished in P4 and P5 in the race, but because Roman Grosjean split the two Red Bulls on the grid. And that was genuine pace. That's the best weekend this team has ever had. But their worst Grand Prix is Monaco. As you could argue they were actually slower than Williams at that Grand Prix. And that's the one weakness that Haas do have to focus on for 2019. Not only is their performance at street circuits but also tyre wear and their performance on the softer compound tyres. As the softer the tyre the worse they were. So hopefully Haas can improve on that next season. But this team for 2019 and beyond is definitely going places. And this is a team to watch over the course of the next few years. Because I think big things await this team. And finally we go on to Force India who had a very troubling pre-season. As the car they brought to testing was not even really a 2018 car. It was a 2017 car with a few additions on it. And in testing and also at the first race, they looked massively underprepared for the new season. And worries about the financial state of the team were also apparent. But despite that, they still did a great job in the first four Grand Prix. As in Baku, Sergio Perez finished on the podium. And they are the only midfield team in 2018 to get onto the podium. And after the trouble this team had gone through, they did deserve it. And as we came into the European season, they looked as though they were getting stronger. After a very impressive P6 finish for Esteban Ocon in Monaco. They were now looking incredibly strong. But then came their toughest part of 2018. The races from France until the summer break. As because of their financial trouble, Force India could not bring any upgrades to the car. And were thus slipping down the order but despite this still had strong races such as Austria and Germany. The team was still keeping themselves in the hunt. But over the summer break, Lawrence Stroll now bought the team. And the team was now thankfully saved. 
And at Spa and Monza, after the summer break, they responded to that news brilliantly by great races at those tracks. Especially at Spa, after a great P3 and P4 in qualifying and a P5 and P6 in the Grand Prix. And then a strong double points finish in Italy. This team was now back where it deserved to be. And for the rest of 2018, continued here and there to score some more points. They didn't look that good at the end of 2018 because I think they were focusing development on 2019, but they were still looking very good. For a team you have to remember went through a lot of trouble trying to even be on the grid. But as ever, this team continues to surprise and prosper. And this is how their 2018 was. By the way, this is including the old Force India in the first half of 2018. So they had a best race result of P3 in Baku and a best qualifying result of P3 at Spa. With 22 points finishes and 111 points if you combine the two teams together. That's Sahara Force India and Racing Point Force India. But their two very good drivers played a massive part in keeping this team alive. As Sergio Perez had his best race result of P3 at Baku, another podium with this team. And then P4 in qualifying at Spa. With 12 points finishes and 62 points. Sergio might get criticised sometimes, but in my opinion was better than Ocon in 2018. Because when it mattered on race day where the points are scored, he showed up. And that's exactly what this team needs. But Ocon still had a good season as well. A best race result of P6 and a best qualifying result of P3 at Spa. With also 10 points finishes and 49 points. How this guy is not on the grid for 2019, I just don't know. He is so talented and he does deserve to be on the grid. Especially ahead of the guy replacing him at Force India, Lance Stroll. Hopefully he can find his way back for 2020. Now for me, the best race has to be Spa because of the result after such a difficult time for the team. It was just the confidence boost that this team needed. But the worst race for me has to be the first one in Melbourne because they weren't really ready for the new season. Their car was miles off where it was in 2017 and they just didn't look ready at all. As they had to use the practice sessions at that weekend really to test out the new car. So for me that is their worst but they couldn't really do anything about that. And with the new investment of the Stroll family I would not be surprised if this team is back towards the front of the midfield. Probably not ahead of Renault, but definitely ahead of teams like Haas and Sauber. I really do hope that this team uses that money well. Because if you take away all of the money from all the teams on the grid, they are one of the best on the grid. So hopefully again they use that cash well. But it really has been a great battle again at the front of the midfield. Even though I think Renault are now going to start pulling away from those midfield teams... Hopefully in 2019 they can be as tight and as exciting as ever. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I'll be back tomorrow with another What If video. Don't forget as well to join my Discord server, link below in the description. Also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and what did you think of Renault, Force India and Haas's 2018. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazer HD, goodbye.